Hello, my name is Caleb Smith with the Rock and Miner newspaper here to provide your news update for June 27th, 2020. We're going to begin and end with the graduation ceremony at Western Wyoming Community College where the Mustang members of the class of 2020 were recognized today. Um, I'm sharing part of the gallery that we have at rocketminer.com. The idea was to have a celebration, but still people keep our, still keep their distance. You'll see plenty of people um, wearing masks or maintaining a, a distance. The idea is that people, um, especially the graduates, um, have been invited to come together. Um, the um, speeches and music and um, other it's congratula congratulations was um, broadcast over the college's radio station, 91.3. People showed up with um, and slowly filled the parking lot from um, pe people were showing up right on the uh, right at the dot at noon up and in the even a little bit after the event started at one. Um, lots of picture taking going on. Um, um, it was interesting to see how s some people decked out their vehicles more than others. Uh, this float right here was my personal favorite. Um, just an absolute delight that gives you shade and allows that Wyoming breeze to go. I th think every staff member I talked to remarked that it was just absolutely perfect weather um, for this. Um, a little bit sunny. You might see that I'm going to be a little bit pink and be looking forward to some more color changes and um, peeling in the coming days. Um, they knew that about um, 86 people had um, indicated that they were going to attend on Facebook, but you never quite know who all is going to show up. Um, they were very happy with the participation, um, both in the physical event and in the online. Um, for those of you who weren't able to make it to the parking lot, um, um, the event will also be, you can see um, video on the college's YouTube channel where you'll be able to hear from the outstanding students. Um, uh, hear the speeches from um, Regina Clark, college trustee board president, uh, Dr. Dale, um, Dr. Kimberly Dale, the college president talking about stuff. Um, it was pretty interesting because you didn't necessarily need to have a pocket radio or ha have your screen on the entire time because fairly soon, anywhere you were in the parking lot, you could hear the radio station. Um, so some people were uh, still um, keeping an eye on the mascot or also looking uh, for other photo opportunities, some involving law enforcement. This was a fun one. Um, I appreciate the fact that um, local officers spent time to decorate their vehicles, um, similar to how the students did. Um, I just got to see a little bit of it, but um, there's some great um, drone footage that I hope that will, will be released to the public soon. Um, there was music, um, people um, put their hands over their hearts like they always do for the Star Spangled Banner. In addition to um, some speeches, it was noted that uh, Governor Mark Gordon uh, was part of the festivities. He's not made it in person to any of the past graduation ceremonies, um, of course, but um, things being as we are and we're getting better at technology and it's better recognizing the importance of connections and community. As one of the outstanding graduates is saying, um, he was able to participate this way. Um, one, the one thing I'd like to point out in this picture is the dog toy that's helping the canine be uh, extra focused. Um, certainly went to, to, went to work on that ball just a short time later. Um, you may have seen some of the cows out there for Troop 4. Um, college has two. Uh, whoever had the idea to add the motorboard to it um, ha gets my respect. There were also those who, even if you didn't show up with the most decorated car, there were those with extra supplies and uh, those car markers to make sure that 
Um, you ended with a little bit more style and pizzazz than you started. Um, it was interesting to see people put their creativity and uh, minds to work. Uh, one of the other interesting things is this kind of hybrid event. There were times where people were focused on their pads, and there's some times where you're focused on uh, what's going on around you. There are some things that are harder to replicate in a virtual environment, and you get that buzz when you hear your name called out, and um, you're, you're celebrating that moment with the classmates, the teachers, the community that backed you up and helped make it possible. At the very end, the college had a, a victory lap. You can see um, Dr. Dale get, get, getting into position to lead everybody through. Sorry that the pictures aren't displaying in order. I've spent more time on that than I'd like to admit. Um, but like I said, they took a loop through the community. Um, you may have caught, caught some of that harking and carrying on. Uh, this was one of the louder vehicles. Um, not all the cans made the trip back. Uh, but you also have the mascot cheering people on, um, people displaying signs. Um, there was actually a contingent lined up just right outside the school. I know uh, there are other places where people encourage to congregate. I don't move that fast. That's why we only have pictures of the beginning and end of the parade. Um, I apologize for my age. Um, this is them on the return trips still. Um, plenty of verb and excitement on, on the crowd. Um, moving on, I'd like to go over um, Saturday's coronavirus numbers. According to John Hopkins University, we're right at 9,939,813 um, total cases. Our death count is at 497,442 people. On the more positive side, um, we're at 5,009,511 um, recoveries. We're still counting our blessings that the majority of the people who get the virus um, catch it and move on without too much trouble. There is a percentage of people who have longer lasting effects and there are those who are dying. That's why we're still promoting um, common sense stuff. Um, personally, I would say if you're making the choice not to wear a mask, don't make trouble for people who do choose to. Um, you may not know what their backstory is. You may not know that they have a family member back home who's susceptible. You, they, uh, these individuals themselves may have these uh, risk factors that they are concerned about. Um, at the same time, consider all these businesses. I, we're seeing across the country how some restrictions are being put back into place or individual businesses are making the choice to add um, um, requirements. Um, it's a private business in the same way they can require you to have shoes and a shirt. So I would say that a lot more places are gonna be requiring masks in the near future. These are decisions coming down primarily from corporate, the owners. I would say, please be considerate and polite to the staff who are charged with um, um, reminding people of that. And it may not be the choice that they're personally making, but um, being considerate and understanding about this will help us get through this a little bit better. In the United States, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention note that total cases are right at 2,459,472, which is 44,602 new cases compared to Friday. Our total deaths sits at 124,976 people which is 651 new deaths compared to yesterday, which is uh, lower than yesterday's total, for which we're, we're thankful. Statewide numbers, let me go to the top. We're right at 1,097 lab confirmed cases. And just responding to some comments I've been seeing lately since I, we don't always provide this context. This is total. This goes back to when we had our first confirmed case in late March um, through April, May, um, almost done with June. Majority of the cases have recovered, but like we've noted, where, where it's um, because of the complications that are possible and the fact that it does seem like um, it's deadlier for a certain part, part of the part, population, especially those with pre-existing conditions, um, to keep our guard up. Um, it was just earlier this week that we got to 1,000. 
the fact that we're almost at 1100 um, shows that we need to um, still be practicing common sense. That's separate from the 295 probable cases, people with symptoms but without test results, um, and the 20 people who've had COVID-19 related deaths. Countywide, um, starting with Sweetwater County, we're still at 73 confirmed cases, eight probable. Um, other hot spots in the state may include um, Fremont County at the highest, um, Laramie County, you went to um, Natrona County. Um, one other thing I'd like to draw your all's attention to oh, as I hit refresh on this page is um, I, there's been some debate, it's debate and discussion lately talking about um, test results, uh, primarily the, um, the, the fact that there are going to be cases where you have false positives people who test positive who don't have the virus, false negatives, people who um, doesn't show any indication of the virus who do have it. Um, the state um, Department of Health actually maintains some uh, information on its test results. You can notice that um, it's not quite a 50-50 split, but roughly half of the cases have been processed by the Wyoming Public Health Lab, which is part of the Department of Health, and just a Flight higher majority by just a sliver uh, have been conducted by outside private labs. Uh, we've heard uh, our Sweetwater County officials talking about the fact that um, uh, they've primarily turned to outside sources. Um, out of the figures that I just hit refresh on, you can see that we're right at 31,485 people have been tested in Wyoming. And when it comes to our overall um, test results, um, a strong majority, 97.1% of the tests that have been conducted have come back negative. Um, less than 3%, 2.9% of all the people who have been tested in Wyoming have come back positive. The overall goal is uh, in an ideal situation, you'd have everybody in the test in the state tested and there'd be zero results. We're, we recognize we're a bit of a ways from that when it comes to the spread of the virus, our control of it, and our testing capabilities. But one of the indicators, and this is why it's one of the six items that the governor that the governor's task force came up with. When you have your, um, they're all ra rated, um, red light, green light, um, yellow light. This is one. Of the, this is our one area that's in the green. Is that for the. Um, we have a very small percentage test uh, come back positive, and that number stayed low. You're also worried if you, you see an increase in that. Um, across the state, um, you can see here that, um, and I've, I've floated all over this map, even at the highest rate of positives in Hot Springs County, um, their max is seven, only 7% 7 of people who got the test um, came back positive. Are there still false positives and false positive negatives in there? Probably. But they, from what we can tell, um, if the tests were in error to the degree that some, some online people are speculating, the numbers would be way higher. 7% um, is the highest. Um, also up there is Fremont, or um, not, it's Uinta County, they were up to 6% positive. Um, also, I always forget down here. Yeah, Johnson County also has a 5%. So even just 1 in 20 people are, are coming back positive. Um, you can also see if you're looking at test results, um, majority, it's, it's just a slight much. 16% um, of cases are 19 to 29 years or 30 to 29. Those are the two biggest ones. Um, just because of the amount of our population, only 5%. Um, our test results are from people 80 or older. Um, we're hopeful to keep this metric low. Um, you know that you're making progress with the virus if your testing is high and the number of positives remain low. There's some time, there's some adjustment in there get, getting to, to where you want to be, but the general consensus between our, our county officials, what we're hearing at the state level, Centers for Disease Controls, that um, you're looking for testing to be up 
positively low. That's when you know that things are turning around. One thing I want, also wanted to share is um, going back to the college because um, there was some great creativity on display today when it came to um, being able to um, still celebrate everyone. And I apologize for my camera work. Um, I also like how even separate from the parade, you hear other people seeing what's going on and honking too. It's always great when you have Mustangs recognizing Mustangs. <laughs> the community taking time to recognizing people who are doing well. Um, It is interesting how some vehicles have a little bit less hanging on than what they started with. But still lots of enthusiasm, uh, lots of well-deserved pride in their accomplishments. Class of 2020, you don't need me telling you this, but you've done a spectacular job under extra difficult circumstances. We're very proud of you, and we're looking forward to what you all do next. With the skills, um, connections, inner strength, um, and heart, huh hard-fought lessons that you've had a few more of this year, we certainly anticipate that you're gonna be doing something extra special with this opportunity that no one knows what's coming next, but we're excited to what's ahead because we're not gonna take some things for granted and you're gonna be part of the Vanguard that helps us with that. This has been Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, wishing you a good day and a safe tomorrow. You go get them, class of 2020.